Welcome. When I teach a high school geometry class, I go pretty quickly to uh, Pythagoras' theorem. I make it at the beginning of the book rather than the end of the book. There's reasons why Euclid put it at the end, but uh, since students learn Pythagoras' theorem in middle school, it kind of makes sense to talk about it when they know it. So in my geometry book, which uh, volume 1, chapter 5, which you can find on my website or go to www.lulu.com, I have a wonderful little practice exercise once we've done Pythagoras' theorem, and I love it because it's actually non-intuitive. It goes as follows. So uh, I happen to know that Australian summers are mighty hot. So there's a sun beats down on the Nullarbor, the plains of Australia, um, through the summer. And it has some troubles with railway tracks. If you take a section of railway track, railway tracks are made of metal. And what does metal do when it warms up? It expands. So let's, let's imagine I have a thousand feet of track. And in the middle of this hot Australian summer, suppose it expands an extra two feet. Just two feet out of a of a whole length of a thousand. A little bit of expansion going on. Now, if the ends of the track, or if this track is pinned down, that means this track is going to bulge. It's going to bulge upwards ever so slightly with that two feet. And just to make this tractable, my question is how high is this bulge? I'm going to pretend this bulge is a, just a symmetrical bulge, and just to make the math straightforward for me, I'll assume it's actually a triangular bulge, just to get a sense of what, how high this could be. So my question is, if this track expanding from a thousand feet to a thousand two feet bulges up some height how high is that bulge in the middle going on the approximation of an isosceles triangle all right well here goes well since i'm going to go with an approximation of isosceles triangle let's uh, actually draw an obvious altitude here i want this red line h um, i'll assume it's symmetrical so it's 500 feet on the left and 500 feet on the bottom of the original track before it expanded and since the new track this whole um, triangular hump is an extra two feet long it's a thousand and two feet long which means this is 1,501 feet, and this side is 501 feet. So having just learned Pythagoras' theorem, I know it's pretty straightforward to work out the height of this bulge. So by Pythagoras' theorem, the height of this beast is square root of um, 501 squared minus 500 squared. All right, and I get out my calculator. It's the square root of 1,001, which is fine. And now comes the surprise. If you actually work out what that's approximately equal to, that's about 31 Point six feet. Now here's the thing. We often teach uh, students to uh, just you know, get the answer and we're done. And the answer is 31.6 feet. But right now, pause. Think about that. I took a thousand feet of track and added a measly two feet to it. And it creates a bulge in the middle of the track that apparently is 31 feet high. That is astounding. Um, what's the height of a two-story building? Maybe a three-story. That's about the height of a three-story building. I could fit an entire three-story building out of this track. Or since I'm six feet tall, five of me could stand on top of our heads and still have a little bit of space left over. Which makes me wonder, what happens to trains in these summers during Australia, Australian summers? A train has to go up these huge tracks, uh, boulders, then down again, the next section will do the same thing. It's like riding a roller coaster. Is that possible? Is that really the case? In fact, in America, do, do railway tracks expand 31 feet high across Phoenix and so forth? Well, obviously I'm being silly here. Number one, there's, there's a couple of physical things going on that uh, no, when tracks expand, yes they do expand, but they're not going to bulge upwards. Gravity will have them you know, bend sideways, um, left and right, and stay on the ground rather than go upwards. So it's a bit silly me asking this question. They don't go physically up in the air. Um, and the other thing is, if you actually listen to what it's like to ride a track, you uh, a train on a track, you hear this click to click to click to click sound, because when they when they actually lay down sections of the track, they actually put little gaps between the sections, each little five or six feet or so. And those gaps are there, and they, that's what makes the clicking sound when the wheels go across the gaps. You hear the click as it falls into the little gap. Um, those gaps actually get smaller in the summer as the metal expands. In fact, it's a great thing to do. Um, my students and I happen to have our school right next to our railway track. So in the middle of September, when we discuss Pythagoras' theorem, we actually do this. And we go outside, we measure these tracks in the middle of September when it's pretty warm, and there are these gaps. And then we go out in the middle of February when it's really cold and measure these gaps again. And we find that they really are smaller gaps. Uh, I'm sorry, bigger gaps in February because the metal is now contracted and, and the smaller gaps in the summer when the metal has expanded. So it really does happen, but of course, it doesn't bulge upward this way. However... I like to think, as an approximation, expanding metal, that just a small increase of two feet out of a thousand can create something 31 feet high. That is wonderful, wonderfully curious. I would love to actually see that. I wish metal did, railway tracks did actually work this way. It was a lot of fun. All right, a nice little tidbit 
of uh, playing Pythagoras' theorem. Thank you.